Now, I will go to ESP system. ESP, I to already told this is an electrical submersible pump or electric submersible pump. Uh, some book they are saying ESP pump. So, pump word is here already ESP. So, you should not use ESP pump, you should say only ESP. ESP means electric submersible pump. Electric submersible. Okay, electric submersible pump when you are specifying, uh, some people use progressive cavity pump, ESPCP, electric because the, this electric submersible pump, this term is so common for centrifugal pump to separate ESP and PCP, submerged PCP, this is ESPCP, electric submersible PCP, okay. So, let, let's say ESP, electric submersible pump actually multi-stage, multi-stage centrifugal pump this is a multi stage centrifugal pump how multi stage works is a one uh, stage is here two stages here three stages here and one single shaft is here one single motor is here motor stage 1 stage 2 stage 3 maybe many stages will be there and those you put into your tubing okay and tubing is there inside your well bore perforations are here and cementing is here okay now fluid is entering perforation through your motor or pump one shaft is going shaft what is the purpose of shaft shaft will be taking torque from motor and it will be giving to your stages then what is stage actually stage will have stage stage will have one impeller one diffuser what is impeller what is a diffuser impeller the term says impaling something okay so impeller shape will be like this it will be circular and it will have channel flow channel like this okay so this is called blade and when you rotate the impeller at very high speed the whatever fluid you give here from center you give a fluid will be going out okay when fluid is going out so collect that fluid so that collected fluid will have higher velocity convert into higher velocity uh, higher velocity into higher pressure when high pressure is created then that high pressure you put into another stage that another stage another stage another stage so create multiple stages so one stage let's say you are pro you are producing 5 bar pressure so two stage will be creating 10 bar pressure three stage 15 bar pressure four stage 20 bar pressure so every stage will be adding pressure 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 so if reservoir pressure is 100 bar after 20 bar uh, maybe uh, uh, you'll be 20 bar or 2500 bar so you'll be getting 200 bar pressure actually so your what liquid level will be increasing so in that case in that way you can increase your productivity so to run this system you need electricity okay so electricity will come to motor so you need one cable and when electricity coming from surface so surface will have controller controller okay on the surface the pump controller will be there so because electrical frequency and other thing you are controlling from the surface only so surface footprint is negligible or no visibility will be there only control panel will be there somewhere it may be there in your control room also and that electricity will come to your motor and motor to your stages stages means the the fluid pumping area but in between motor and stages there will be one section called seal section Why seal section will be there in between motor and stages? You know, electric motor is very sensitive to liquid like water. If water entering into your motor, then motor coil can burn because motor will have your transformer oil or motor oil. And if you replace motor oil with well bore fluid, well bore fluid such as water, so in that case, the two electric uh, short circuit can happen inside and firing can happen. Once firing done, burning done, you cannot work. Right. Then again, you have to replace whole system. That is very expensive affair. What people will be doing? 
they will be putting one seal section See, uh, this is also very long section actually so there will be several level of seals so that no fluid will be entering or no fluid will be going out from the motor so the seal will be protecting the motor so majority failure occurs in esp system is the seal failure actually okay so, so the seal section is very long some energy seal will be there some a type b type several seals will be there in in inside this uh seal seal section or protector this is a protector okay uh, so some company like chevron seal and other seals also there in the market uh, people will be using so normally the csp manufacturer for red pump or uh, becker who just those companies they will be manufacturing there will be a motor seal section and stage 1 stage 2 and how many stages will be requiring for a well bore sometime 100 to 100 stages and uh, length length will be like two or three story building equal to okay so and or the head uh, length of per stage per stage will be 1 inch well, maximum 2 inch 1 inch 1.5 inch that that much of height will be there per stage so 200 stream is 200 inches so, 200 inches plus your seal section plus your motor section then whole thing will be very long actually and there will be one shaft shaft will be based on your power torque requirement if torque requirement will be very high then shaft diameter also will be high but normally uh, they will try to reduce shaft diameter as much as possible so that you can get more fluid area and system can uh, be lasting longer and cost will be also lower esp also very common type of pumping system and it is used for household application like a submersible pump in agriculture application household application also people are using but for surface application also uh, this centrifugal pump uh, is there even uh, multi stage centrifugal pump also used for surface application where pressure uh, you have to increase pressure and you have to maintain certain flow rate also so in that case maybe two three four stages well, normally three stages centrifugal pump can be used for surface application single stage uh, if you want to use for same head and same flow rate you have to use very large diameter pump so in that case to reduce the diameter you can use number of stages so in well bore also you have uh, diameter limitation so you use number of stages okay and if you have larger diameter then your uh, diameter uh, your number of stages will be re reduced so total length of the pump will be reduced so later when we will discuss about details about an esp system so that time you will know and that uh, your uh, uh, esp how it is linked with your diameter and number of stages okay esp uh, performance so esp performance depends on your fluid uh, viscosity also if viscosity very high esp performance will be going down so viscosity actually in impeller what happens impeller you have impeller blades and if you rotate it at very high speed so what happens fluid will be moving from here 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 then it will be exiting okay and if you have high viscosity so fluid layer will not try to move or slide from on over each other so when it is getting resistance your performance will be dropping so if you have emulsion water cut say 70 80 percent so that time viscosity very high and you are running your esp system actually your performance will be dropping at that viscosity now if you have gas volume what will happen actually centrifugal pump or esp system it will be sucking fluid from well bore and then it will give energy to the fluid and fluid will be moving up rotating and moving up rotating moving up so what happens if you have gas so when it is sucking after sucking it will give kinetic energy to the fluid particle okay now if you are having gas so gas will have low density and it is trying to give energy but gas because of low density it will not absorb so much energy but if you have liquid high density it will absorb good amount of energy so low density energy it is not energy absorbing energy properly so what is happening it is not creating lots of vacuum so that fluid will be entering further okay so it is not creating that much of low pressure so the fluid will be sucking so finally what happens system will not be able to suck so it will not be able to pumping pumping the system that's why the priming is required first thing when you are running centrifugal pump priming means i already described in previous lecture priming means fill the centrifugal pump with liquid completely then start then switch on if you are not doing priming uh, then there will be problem again when you are running and if you are creating two phase flow again go to your phase diagram 
this is T, this is P and present condition is here and after before entering centrifugal pump it is become two phase flow. What will happen? When you are getting low pressure it will give more gas from liquid. When you are getting more gas from liquid what will happen? Again the same issue it will not be able to suck fluid and it will create vibration, noise, cavitation and lots of uh, unknown issues will come or uh, lots of problem will come which will not be able to solve by normal production engineer maybe you have to stop the production or your pump will fail or you have to call your vendor esp vendor that your pump is not working so this is not working because of your wellbore pro problem so you have to understand the wellbore reservoir properties and phase diagram also then only you can select your esp system or you can run your esp system properly and to increase productivity hydraulic ejector or hydraulic jet pump what is it we know if we create uh, conical shape of pipe very high pressure fluid is coming and high flow rate also there okay and you create one narrow zone you create one narrow zone here so what will happen same fluid will be passing through this narrow zone when it is passing through the narrow zone initially velocity v equals q by a okay v1 so narrow zone it is v2 v2 equals q by a2 this is point 0.2, this is point 0.1. So, area is changed. So, velocity is changed. That means, velocity area reduce. So, velocity increased. So, you got velocity increase at point 0.2 position, nozzle exit position. When velocity increased, what will happen? It will create low pressure. How, how it will create low pressure? You can remember P by rho g plus V square by 2 g plus Z equals constant. So, if I assume Z is not changing or elevation is not changing and constant is not changing anyway. So, P and V square is related inversely related. If P increasing, V must be reducing. So, in that case, V increase that means P must be reducing, right. So, P is reduced here, P2 is lower, right, because V1, V2 is increased. So, P2 reduced. So, now you create one pipe here, okay. And if it is connected to well bore or any low pressure area, so fluid will be sucked and it will be sucked and it will be mixed here. Okay. This is this is called nozzle area. This is called mixing chamber. Mixing chamber, this is called diffuser area. This is called diffuser. Okay. So, high pressure fluid coming or primary fluid, this is called high pressure primary fluid, high pressure or primary fluid. Okay. This is secondary fluid or low pressure fluid. The secondary fluid or low pressure fluid will be sucked because of high pressure fluid and after that it must be mixing properly. Okay. If it is not mixing properly, then your suction rate will not be proper. Although you created a, a low pressure, but because of not mixing properly, your suction will be incomplete. So, what will be your purpose here? You have to see mixing chamber dimensions and inlet fluid property also and suction fluid property also all together. If it is mix, giving proper mixing, it is creating small, small bubble, it is mixing, lots of turbulence is being created, then suction will be efficient once you get efficient suction and it is still having higher velocity because v2 is high so whole mix mixture also will have higher velocity now at point 3 what do you do at point 3 you reduce velocity and increase pressure how will you reduce velocity you increase this uh, pipe in diameter where in increasing pipe in diameter in diffuser so Again, you see V3 equals Q by A3, right? So, when area increase, your velocity decreased. So, you got lower velocity. That means your P increased. Pressure is increased as V3. So, jet pump works on based on basically Bernoulli's equation, which is uh, energy equation actually. So, initially velocity high and diameter high, then passing through a nozzle, velocity increasing very high rate and pressure is going down. Now, pressure gone down, 
mix it properly after mixing pass through diffuser so they reduce velocity increase pressure so that pressure will be delivered to your surface okay that mixed fluid so this is the principle of hydraulic ejector so there will be several terms for ejector sometimes they see this hydraulic ejector sometimes jet pump uh, so whenever you are studying this you see different terms they are using okay eductor ejector jet pump uh, so many other terms also there uh, because sometimes in exam they will be using different terms so you should not say sir i did not study this one because the different terms they are using that we are using in saccharide pump also people are using different terms for example saccharide pump will have beam pump nodding donkey srp uh, th so many other terms also there they are using so if uh, examiner is using different terms so you should not say this is not in syllabus rather they use different term so whenever you are studying about jet pump ejector or other artificial lifting system you should check alternative names also if there is alternative name, you should remember and next is hydraulic engine pump hydraulic engine what is hydraulic engine pump? hydraulic engine pump is like this uh, in, you have saccharide pump right saccharide pump you have piston cylinder arrangement you have ball here you have one valve here moving up and down from top you are giving vertical motion right from top you are giving vertical motion continuously now in hydraulic jet pump what they are doing instead of this long rod they are putting like this uh, one piston is here another piston is here and one rod is connected okay and how these pistons are run so from surface you are giving certain high pressure fluid okay from surface you are giving high pressure fluid this high pressure fluid will be running this top piston okay piston 1 piston 2 so piston uh, like you can remember the james rod engine so similar way like uh, you give high pressure fluid high pressure water or diesel and piston 1 will be moving up and down because of the high pressure and that up and down motion will be transferred to piston 2 bottom piston so the bottom piston will be sucking well over fluid and it will be delivering to the surface okay so this concept is called hydraulic engine pump okay uh, this is not so much commonly used but this is also one principle sometimes people use but hydraulic jet pump is very much commonly used for in different application medical application other application also there uh, but in both cases you need a surface pumping unit on the surface you must have one pumping system where you create very high pressure that high pressure will go through uh, your uh, tubing and casing annulus and it will be entering into tubing and it will be lifting to the surface uh, so this is similar to gas lift system where gas in gas lift system you inject gas from the surface but here you in, you are injecting liquid from the surface but here one caution is there in many cases your system they put another well bore where they inject liquid to increase reservoir properties not well bore thing but in this case you are using some mechanical arrangement to increase productivity not modifying reservoir but when you are people are using enhanced oil recovery in that case they are using uh, high pressure high temperature or different chemical related fluid they are trying to modify reservoir but in our case in artificial lifting systems uh, whatever we are injecting here gas or liquid we are not modifying reservoir rather we are trying to improve productivity from well bore only when fluid is entering well bore after that we are trying to modify fluid uh, or we are giving energy extra energy so that we can get more productivity gas lift system so gas lift basically there are two type one will be continuous type one will be intermittent type so what is continuous type continuous type is like this first you understand one tubing okay now you have one valve here okay and you have one pipe from surface i am assuming separately although in actual practice will be separate maybe it will be uh, the annular area between tubing and casing the one gap will be there so through that gap you can inject gas but here i am assuming a different pipe okay and there will be one compressing system on the surface surface compressor later we will discuss about compressor details so this will be creating a nozzle okay and let's say initially you are getting very low productivity because of uh, reservoir pressure depletion so what you create you create lots of small small bubbles because high pressure you are getting a nozzle 
you create very small nozzle and you create small small bubble okay and if you see hydrostatic pressure h rho g if uh, h is like this if h is here so your pressure is low at this point okay so if i am calculating nearby gas injection point pressure is very high because hydro column liquid column length is very high now you inject certain gas and again you check pressure at point let us say a b at point b at point b pressure will be lower because the column length is lower now when column length is lower uh, lower the injected gas particle will be expanding when it is expanding it will take more area actually okay again you take point c again your gas bubble volume will be much larger okay so what is happening here you are modifying density of the fluid average density so if you if you have h column length and you have rho density so pressure at the bottom or a point is h rho g now you have lots of gas particle bubbles also because of gas bubble your total hydrostatic column weight will be reduced because h rho g rho is changed because you put lots of gas bubbles so average fluid column weight will be reduced when it is reduced what happen whale bore will be taking more fluid inside whale bore and you will get more production actually your target will be to create bubble uh, bubbly flow not mist flow annual flow or other type of flow if you are increasing gas rate there is a very high rate you say uh, too, too optimistic engineer you are and you want to get very high production you want to impress your boss what will happen you inject very high amount of gas finally it will create annular flow or mist flow and in that case you are injecting very high amount of gas but your productivity not increasing but it will go down actually so you have to put optimal amount of gas so that you can get maximum production and again your gas slip nozzle location also very important which location you are injecting and how much hydrostatic pressure is there so that all the analysis you have to do before you optimize your well bore so that we will discuss when we will discuss about continuous gas slip system and another system is called intermittent gas slip system you have very low productivity low productivity what will happen there will be one uh, uh, plunger okay and plunger catcher will be there and what happens uh, when very low productivity is there very low amount of liquid is held up in gas well so you ask liquid to build up here column build up okay when liquid column is built up let's say one meter two meter then you inject gas from surface at very high rate when you are injecting gas it will be pushed up the plunger is pushing up when plunger is moving up all the liquid over it it will be also going out from the well bore when it is reached, reached to the surface you hold it for some time again you lift it when it is going down whole plunger again it will be going down to the exact position if one catcher will be there a catcher will catch the plunger again liquid column will be built up inject pressure it will move up so this a few trips maybe for two three four five trips will be done per day when you have very low flow rate or low productivity in that case you can use intermittent gas lift okay sucker out pump also very low flow rate this is also very low but if you have a very high amount of gas so this is also one good option to increase productivity of gas well pcp or progressive cavity pump PCP I already told that is a single screw single screw pump it is single screw pump and used for very high viscosity viscosity pump this is also positive displacement type uh, positive uh, displacement type uh, positive displacement type <coughs> and multiple screw uh, pump also possible but that can be fit into your well bore because it needs very larger uh, diameter tubing diameter so that may not be available so that's why normally single screw pump or pcp is used pcp is like this okay pump will be here one rod will be going to surface normally and there will be one motor this is called sucker rod in SRP system or sucker rod pump system, you have seen one sucker rod is going from surface to the plunger. Here also, one sucker rod is going to surface to the pump. Okay, but in sucker rod pump, the sucker rod 
was giving tensile force only reciprocating but in this case it is giving torque from surface it is coming it is giving torque or twisting moment so it is transferring torque but in sucker roller pump it was transferring tensile and compressive force only okay no torque because it was there is no rotation but here rotation is there so it is only torque it is not giving any tensile force no tension uh, now this pcp pump how does it look like it will be like it will have one stator okay hollow stator and this will be elastomer elastomeric layer is be there inner layer and one rotor will be there rotor will be helical shaped okay rotor and elastomer if i cut uh, this uh, stator this is called a stator so pcp will have one rotor on a stator rotor will be rotating inside stator okay and inside stator there will be one layer of elastomers so rotor for example this is rotor rotor will be rotating continuously inside layer is there so metal this is metal rotor is metal metal will not touch the stator uh, stator metal it will be touching only the elastomer and stator inside also it is like this helical okay so helical inside rotor uh, stator uh, cavity rotor also helical so if you rotate it actually these two helix will create cavity okay if i put rotor here so there will be cavity okay there will be cavity so this cavity will be filled with liquid and if you rotate it the cavity will be progressing so that's why it is called progressive cavity pump so cavity progressing okay so if you rotate rotor then cavity will be progressing it will take certain amount of fluid cavity will be progressing take certain amount of fluid cavity will be progressing so continuously this cavity will be progressing so if you see wikipedia page there is one some animation someone has uploaded so there you can see how the cavity is progressing it is rotating and progressing like this so that fixed amount of fluid you take fixed amount of rotation you give so fixed amount of fluid will be transferred like this and this is a positive displacement pump so you can develop any amount of pressure or any amount of head and it is also can be used as a metering pump metering pump means fixed amount of uh, fluid it will be taking and if you control rotational speed so fixed amount of fluid will be delivered you can create one toothpaste and you give maybe two rotation 100 milliliter three rotation 150 milliliter so that way you can uh, use as a metering pump and pcp has multiple uses other than oil and gas industry use any thick fluid can be pumped for example toothpaste grease i said and uh, actually i have filed some one patent sometime back so the patent i developed for oil industry but the company took it for uh, human left ventricular assistive device design okay uh, if there is any heart ailment and you need continuous fluid flow uh, to the body so in that case that can be used an alternative to heart so that's why the company took it uh, took it for their portfolio the yeah. health 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 invention portfolio and uh, yeah pcp rotational speed rpm will be 3 to 500 3 to 5 500 rpm it, it will have a rotational speed because a long rod is there that's why you cannot install this pcp in the very long well bore so in some cases you have to use uh, ESPCP, electric submersible PCP. What they do? The motor will be submerged into well bore. Why this surface operated and ESP concept came up? Because initially, if you say 10, 20 years back, there was no VFD concept uh, or VFD was not available in the market. Now VFD available. So using VFD, you control your speed. Normally, this 300, 500 RPM motor will be producing 1400 or 2800 RPM speed. Now, if you want to reduce the speed, you need uh, VFD or you have to change your motor design. So, the newer design they have all this facility like uh, changing frequency and motor design uh, uh, parameters they change and they put one motor it will be producing lower speed and it will be submerged into liquid. So, that is called ESPCP like electric submersible pump was there for centrifugal pump. So, same similar term they use ESPCP. So, the term they are using ESPCP electric submersible 
progressive gravity pump but in esp system they are using only esp now another type of pump is the metal what is metal pcp metal pcp is like this uh, in elastomeric pcp i said like elastomeric layer will be there metal cover elastomeric layer and rotor is rotating inside okay in metal pcp they remove the elastomer and they use all metal so what happens in that case like you have a stator in inside okay and you have rotor okay and you have cavity okay this is rotor and this is elastomer so what happens uh, when helical rotor and stator is there elastomer creates leak leak free pump but if you are using all metal so it will not be leak free when elastomer is there so actual leakage uh, principle becomes like this if i have rotor like circular shape and if i have elastomer okay okay so rotor diameter can be little bit larger than your stator inner diameter so that's why it will create leak free free pressure p1 pressure p2 if pressure p1 is very high okay p2 is lower then fluid try to pass through this gap okay when fluid is trying to passing through the gap and elastomer is little bit depressed the leakage will be very low but in metal pcp what happens you don't have elastomer you have only metal right and i have stator like this a rotor like this rotor rotor this is stator this is elastomer elastomer and this is all metal okay stator when rotor is rotating and pressure one pressure two so there is no depression of elastomer right so because of no depression of elastomer leakage rate will be higher then why people developed all metal pcp all metal pcp is developed because they wanted to apply for high temperature wellbore high viscosity high temperature wellbore is there so their uh, elastomer will be very much problematic because at high temperature elastomer life will be lower so to increase the pcp life they remove elastomer they made all metal pcp but all metal pcp manufacturing is difficult because you have to maintain very high precision if you are not maintaining then the system will fail but one company is there they are making already actually but elastomer uh, pcp there are several companies are there they are making uh, progressive cavity pump with elastomer and temperature is limited because of this elastomeric issue but if temperature uh, if you are using all metal then temperature may not be limited but again leakage issue is there in all metal pcp if thin fluid is there then leakage will be a very big problem but thick fluid leakage will be okay now we have seen uh, different types of artificial lifting system srp esp pcp gas lift jet pump basically this five and subsection also there like metal all metal these sort of things are there now we have seen reservoir properties fluid properties different pumps different artificial lift then what are the selection criteria so well completion and profile you have to know when you are selecting any artificial lift geographical environmental condition you will see whether geographically accessible uh, for example offshore well bore you cannot use all type of artificial lift reservoir characteristics you have to know for you know, two phase flow single phase flows and becoming in future or declination rate analysis also you have to know reservoir pressure well bore productivity already you know this is linked with your artificial lifting production system uh, characteristic of fluid will be requiring operating uh, fluid and other properties for example solid or sand is there gas is there temperature how much temperature is there very high temperature elastomeric pcp should not be used and very high temperature if you are using motor electric motor for esp or espcp then again you have to consider uh, those temperature parameter and uh, viscosity parameter viscosity parameter will be changed because of your fluid property change for example uh, gas is coming out or you are creating multiphase emulsion your water is more now water cut increased so in that case viscosity will be changed when viscosity change your fluid property is changing uh, that means your pump performance will change your pump can fail also sometime net positive suction head net positive suction head, i already told that uh, every pump will be requiring certain inlet pressure 
and if you are using centrifugal pump it needs very larger amount of inlet pressure because it will be sucking fluid and it will be delivering at very high rate but in certain case net NPSH will be lower that is fine for example sakurat pump a small amount of fluid will be taking and it will be delivering uh, so in that case low NPSH may be okay but when at inlet if you have gas or sand then uh, your case is different you have to consider separately priming and dry running centrifugal pump ESP PCP or any pump uh, they need actually priming or initial filling the cavity of the pump but in gas leap system priming uh, is not a question or in jet pump also that that is not the question but in other uh, applications you have to consider other application for example pcp sakurat pump or esp you need to consider filling the pump otherwise your system can fail or it will give cavitation it can give um, vibration noise so to avoid all this negative aspect you have to fill the pump i developed this chart actually this is not exact for example 16000 i have written so it is not exact 16000 it just to give rough idea how much it possible for example srp esp pcp jet pump plunger lift gas lift i have divided like this srp it can go up to 16000 feet or 5 kilometer length esp also can go very high pcp can not go very high because long rod is there but if you are using espcp maybe it will go very long uh, well bore and jet pump uh, can go also very high so uh, fluid capacity if you see uh, srp is having very low fluid capacity plunger is uh, lift also very low fluid capacity but if you see gas lift it is having very high flow capacity high viscosity uh, pcp is very good sand if you have sand then uh, srp limited use can be possible but some other all the pumps will be having difficulty gas lift has no problem because there is no rotating part plunge uh, jet pump also there is no rotating pump so sand may be good high temperature if you have elastomer or soft material then high temperature may be a problem speed if you see the uh, srp speed is very low even plunger lift also only few travels per day so it is speed is very low cost wise srp very high well deviation you see this uh, pcp and other may be good but srp will be very difficult so dry running uh, you see you see this srp esp pcp not good actually jet pump may be possible uh, gas well gas well uh, another well can be okay but few uh, so artificial lifting system srp esp pcp they need to avoid gas okay reservoir pressure uh, low pressure srp will be okay but esp may need uh, in inlet pressure so that also you have to consider uh, priming is needed for SRP, PCP, ESP and gas lift and other thing priming may not be a question. High gas well ratio if you have higher gas amount then for certain ESP for ESP or PC, PCP, SRP you have to avoid gas and this is the end of this lecture thank you very much.